Hi, this is Dan McAlpin on the Ipswich Chronicle. Again, we're, again, we're with uh, Rob Martin, president of the Ipswich Ale Brewery, and uh, we're in the Ipswich Ale Brewery offices right now. Uh, you mentioned to me a long time ago that, uh, that you had written a paper on um, when you were in college about running a business that would be a brewery and a restaurant, and that's basically what you've got here. You've got the Ipswich Ale Brewer, Brew House and the Ipswich Ale Brewery. They're in the old Saffron Clam uh, building in Ipswich at Two Brewery, brewery Place. Uh, I was just wondering, it seems like it's going pretty well, but how does this fit in to the overall uh, craft beer market on the North Shore? Hi, Dan. Yeah, I, I wrote a paper way back in 1988, so over 30 years now since I wrote that paper. I was a home brewer and I had a class called Principles of Entrepreneurism. And in that class, it, you were tasked to come up with a business plan. And the business plan that I did was a business plan for a brewery that had a restaurant component to it. It was way before the craft beer revolution. We were seeing some craft beer out there. And I, I saw that people enjoyed the product, enjoyed the things that I home brewed, and thought that there was a viable business there. It's been a long road to getting here. We've been in business at Ipswich Ale since 1991. Um, one of the oldest breweries in Massachusetts and really one of the oldest breweries in the country that has, has come about since the craft brewing movement. The movement's been great. It's really evolved over the years. When we first started, it was just about craft beer and growlers. It was pretty easy. You didn't have to have a lot of styles. As time has gone by, the packaging has changed. We went from growlers to 12 ounce. Uh, 12 ounce bottles that what is, is. What is a growler? A growler is a 64 ounce bottle. Oh and anybody gosh. old enough to remember Ipswich Ale in the early days, that's the only thing that we sold it in. 64 ounce bottles and real early, they were clear bottles and kegs. Those were the two ways that you got it. Then we went to 12 ounce six packs um, and that seemed to stay the, the type of packaging um, over the years that, that held on until cans came along. Two years ago, we put in a canning line. We do all of our own canning here as well as the bottles and the kegs. The industry has changed. We have now upwards of 7,000 breweries in the United States, well over 150 breweries in Massachusetts. It's been great for the consumer. There's been a ton of opportunity for consumers to try different products, different styles, and any type of beer out there has a consumer, which has really been awesome to see. Now, how does your a craft beer differ from, say, a larger production, um, say Budweiser. I'm just pulling that out of, out of, of rabbit out of a hat on that one. But a larger, you know, consumer beer uh, versus a craft beer. How does that how does that differ? And can you also, you know, say Budweiser? I have no idea how many how many barrels of Budweiser brews in a year versus a company like yours. Budweiser will do maybe 400 million all told, we'll do about 40,000 this year. So it's quite, quite a, a substantial difference. Our beers are different than the mass domestic beers, particularly in the um, ingredients that we use. Most craft brewers, including us, use barley, hops, yeast, and water. Those tend to be the ingredients. We add other things in, sometimes there's coconut, sometimes there's this, sometimes there's that but we use those ingredients. The mass domestic beers typically use barley, but they'll also use rice as a filler. They'll also use corn as a filler. We stay away from that. Part of the definition of craft brewing is using traditional ingredients. And are, when you say craft brewing, are you staying to the German purity laws for beer as far as craft brewing in the United States goes, or are you going a little bit far afield from that? We don't. Uh, some of our beers certainly do, but that's somewhat limiting. We just came out with a new product uh, in our pilgrimage series, first product in that, which is a variant of our 1620, and that variant has coconut in it. Now, coconut was not something that the Germans and the German purity law would allow, but it actually has a nice flavor in this tropically flavored uh, 1620 variant. Yeah, there aren't too many coconuts in Germany. Um, when do you add the flavors? At what point, you know, I know that there are different beer flavors now, much more so than there used to be. When does that get added in the process? 
It could, be, it could be anywhere from the brew kettle all the way through to the fermenters. If we're doing something that has coffee in it, another thing that wouldn't be tolerated under the German purity law, the Reinheitsgebot, that goes in in the kettle or perhaps the Whirlpool. If we're doing some of the other flavors, the coconut flavors and things like that, that may go in in the fermenters. It, it, it depends on the volatility of the flavors, Due to temperature, there's a whole bunch of scientific reasons why we do what we do when we do it. Now, my last question: um, I was in Framingham, and uh, that we went, my, went for the, to a microbrewery with my daughter there, and she ordered a flight of beer, and it was very, very uh, sharp, all of it. And is there a dip, How does what does that? How, how does that happen? That sharpness may be a, a perce your perception of hops. Mm -hmm. It could be that bitter sharpness. Beers can range from mild and sweet to sharp and hoppy. They can be pale, pale light to extremely dark. It all depends on the recipe. When you look at recipes, it, your, your flavor profiles come from grain, and grains are roasted like coffee, so they could be very, very light all the way up to black. They come from hops, which can be very, very bitter, they can be very uh, citrusy and fruity. There's a wide variety of hops, just like there are grapes and wine. And yeast, yeast also gives a flavor component, depending on which yeast you use. Final question, what's the difference between beer and ale? Beer is a catch-all. Ale is a, is a beer that's fermented with ale yeast. Ale yeast is a warm fermenting yeast. A lager, which is also a beer, is fermented with a cold fermenting yeast, and that's that's the big difference. But beer's the catch-all for ales and lagers. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Absolutely.